Hi, Sandra here. Welcome to Create in Spain. And today I'm going to be doing a watercolor card with watercolor pencils. And it's going to be a card that if you uh, download the file, you have two alternatives. You can have a straightforward card or you can have one that has these little grips for adding a store card, gift card, phone card, that sort of thing, if you want to, on the inside. So the first thing I've got here is my front panel. Now I've created an offset from the original piece, so like that. And I have taken the liberty of stamping it with some leaf designs. Now I've stamped it in black. If I wasn't doing a video of this, I would probably have stamped it in a pale gray and just left it without any visible outline. But because that won't show up when I do the video, I've got it in black. And I have half a dozen watercolor pencils here. They happen to be Derwent, but they could be anything. I have a jade green, lime green, light blue, sea green, blue, and kingfisher blue. And I'm just going to use these together with a water pen. Um, this is a Pentel one, an Aquash pen. You can get all sorts of different makes of them. I found these to be very good. I've had them for several years and they're really convenient for doing this kind of stuff. Now this is the type of thing that you could do when you're on holiday if you want to do a little bit of arty crafty stuff without taking bucket loads of supplies with you. You could actually stamp over a whole sheet and just use pencils and colour the whole sheet in one go ready for you to cut when you get home. So you don't necessarily have to do this at home if you're staying with friends or relatives or something and you still want to be crafty, there's no reason why you can't do this. So what I'm going to do is start off with a very pale colour. Uh, this is the sea green. Dip it in water and just scribble by the side of my card. Then I'm going to take the water brush pen and I'm just going to add, and you might not be able to see this very easily because it's very, very pale, this one, little amounts of colour at random places. And I truly do mean random. I'm not thinking about where it's going. And just going to add a little splash of colour there. If you want to clean your brush off in between colours, just a piece of tissue paper will do the job. And I'm going to use the blue one. So this one would be a bit of a deeper colour, I think. And pick some of that up. Yeah, a bit deeper. And again, I'm really not taking any care of it. I'm just dabbing it on. Not even paying attention to the lines, really. They're just there as a guide. So I've used that one. I think I'll now use this one, which is the lime green. I want a bit of zingy colour in here. So I have some lime green. A bit more water on there. There we go. And so the nice thing with this is that you can just play you know it's it's not serious this isn't supposed to be realistic and you notice although it is autumn i haven't gone for traditional autumn colors i just didn't feel like it sorry i just didn't want to do oranges and reds now i'm going to go for another color which in this case is jade green literally just dip it in water and scribble and you can sharpen these with a normal pencil sharpener. It's not a problem if you need to. And like so. I think I'm going to go for some more blue. I'm just going to put that one over the top here. You can just play with this. I mean, you can use whatever colours you like. 
you could use something completely irrational for a colour for a leaf if you wanted to. I have to admit, blues aren't particularly <laughs> leaf colours, but I think, I think it works as a design feature. I quite like it. Okay, and I've left some of it still white within the leaf. I just like doing that. It just leaves highlights. Now, clean up is really easy. You can either wipe it with a paper towel or if you like me, just get a baby wipe and wipe it off. Now, I am going to dry this afterwards simply because I don't want my card getting any wetter than it has to be. And I don't want anything transferring to the inside of the card. There we go. So that would be my front panel, except for the fact you notice it has some slits in it. And I didn't just put them there because I fancy putting slits in particularly. What I have here is some silver card and I have a buckle that I've cut out. Now I cut it out of normal card and then I put some glitter paper over it. But you can use whatever you like and it doesn't have to be glittery. You could use metal foil ones. You could use plain card. It doesn't make any difference. It's your personal taste. Now, because this is watercolour paper and it's not overly damp, because I didn't use that much water, I don't have to dry this off. What I do need to do, though, is to centre this ribbon, if you like, that I've put through in the slots. These are 1.5 centimetre slots, I think, if I remember correctly. And my card isn't quite that wide, so I need to centre it a little bit. And then what you do, once you have it centred, you carefully turn it over and you put a tiny amount, I should have done this before, of a double-sided tape underneath here. I'm not going to take the backing off of this at the moment, I'm going to check that I've got it lined up again before I do that literally just a tiniest amount of double-sided tape. Now check that you have these things where you want them. Okay and then take the double-sided backing off. Ah the whole thing came off. It has a tendency to do that with this watercolour. It doesn't like staying on it. A bit of a pain but there we go. If I burnish that down a bit, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> it'll stay there and the backing will come off instead of all of it. Wish me luck. Yay! I think. Yeah, I did get it that time. Now, because I've messed around with this, I'm going to pick it up and just check from the front that it's where I want it. There we go. And then the last little bit can be snipped off. So the reason that I don't, actually I'll snip that bit off first. The reason that I don't bend it back is sometimes that can distort where the ribbon or the card actually falls on the front. It can cause a problem. There we go. So I'm not worried about this piece because this can slide wherever I want it to go. So that's not a problem. But I've got my band across the front now. Right, now when it comes to putting this on the front, if you, actually I need to demonstrate with this one because this one has the, uh, the grips. When you put this on the front, you need to make sure that these are not taped over or glued over or obstructed. They need to be free floating. And so when you do put your card front on, you need to make sure that it is positioned in just the right place so that you don't get a problem with that tape being either showing 
under here or being over the top of these okay so that is a definite no-no so to avoid that from happening what I'm going to do is cut some of my tape in half because I haven't got a very thin tape and in this particular case I'm just going to put a little band of tape just there and move that pencil out of the way that'll move things out of the way as well and put this in the center and just check where my lines are going to be I don't want to draw a line around this and then put it down because I don't want anything to show but I do need to make sure that I don't put any tape too near to the fold line now I'm not using the gift version so on the one that I want to do I don't have to be quite so careful about it and I can put the tape on the back of here or on there but again I do need to make sure that it's not going to show on the front of the card. Okay I've managed to get all the backing tape off of here and I'm just going to put the glasses back on. I'm going to stand directly over this to try and get it in the right place or at least a place where I'm happy with it. There we go. Phew! That's the hardest bit of the entire card actually doing that. Now because I didn't put tape directly under this little bit what I'm going to do is to apply just a little bit of glue. I think in future when I do this card again if I use the same watercolour paper what I will do is use a liquid glue underneath it. It does make it easier if you're, if you're for example you're using this one if you can use a liquid glue, if your card is thick enough so that it's not going to show through, then it would be a lot easier to do a nice glue line around here than use tape. And certainly in the case of this particular paper, it's a lot easier to use glue than try and get the backing tape off. Right, I have one more thing that I want to do for this card. I have cut out a nice piece of glitter paper, the same paper that I used for the buckle. And I've put some double sided tape on the back. You can actually cheat, and I did before, but I forgot to do it this time. And put the double sided tape on the back of your glitter paper and then cut it out but I forgot to do that when I cut this one out, so. And get it lined up. There we go. Whoops. Just throw it around everywhere, why not? And there we have the finished card. I think it looks very pretty. I quite like the dots around the edge that are cut out. And so if you do it with this one, you can end up with a gift card slot for it as well, because the gift card slot will be in the top here. And then you can write your message in the bottom. I haven't put a sentiment on here because it could be for any occasion. And if I don't yet want to give the card, if I'm making it for future use, I'll add the sentiment later on. So here's a close-up of the finished card, and I think that looks very pretty. Now, I so said this one is the one that does not have a gift card slot in the top. And I made another one, this one using Inktense pencils, so they are a little brighter in colour. And this one does have the slots for a gift card, so you literally slide in your gift card under the tabs and so you could use a phone card gift card whatever so there we go two different versions hope you like them bye